Hi, I'm Emily from The Blue Mouse, and today I'm going to teach you how to knit the Eyelet Rose Cowl. This is my newest cowl pattern, and it has this really beautiful lace texture detail throughout it, and it has garter edging on both sides. It's worked in the round and is actually a lot easier than it looks. It's made up of a four row repeat. It's a really simple pattern that gives you this beautiful textured detail throughout it. And there are timestamps in the description and along the bottom of the screen if you want to skip ahead. And when it comes to the materials of this pattern, you will need a set of US 8 five millimeter circular needles in either 16 inch or 24 inch circumference, which is 40 or 60 centimeters, or any size needed to match gauge, approximately 230 yards, 210 meters of worsted weight yarn, which is sometimes called medium number four weight yarn in big box stores. And for this sample, I used I Love This Yarn, which is from Hobby Lobby. It is a 100% acrylic yarn with 355 yards, 325 meters per seven ounces or 200 grams. And this is the colorway Glacier. When it comes to choosing yarn, you can choose any yarn that will match gauge or at least get very close to matching gauge. An easy way to choose a similar yarn is to choose something with similar yardage or meterage to weight, which is 200 grams as the sample. The sample is 355 yards, 325 meters per 200 grams. So you want something close to that. You can always divide 355 in half to get how much it is per 100 grams. But I recommend choosing a yarn that is within a maximum of 20 to 30 yards, 18 to 27 meters of the sample. So I went through and found some yarns from popular websites that have similar yardage meterage amounts, but as a big disclaimer, I have not used any of these yarns to make this cowl. I cannot guarantee they will work. Everyone has different tension. The only way to guarantee it for yourself is to swatch. That being said, here are some yarns I found that have a similar approximate yardage or meterage per 200 grams. Many of these are more affordable options. Some other materials that you will need are a stitch marker and a yarn needle. And when it comes to sizing, this pattern is written for only one size, and that is 25 and 3 quarters inch around 65 and a half centimeters and 12 and a half inches, 32 centimeters tall. But you can easily add length to this pattern by doing more repeats of the stitch pattern before doing the end garter edging. And for the gauge, the gauge is worked in eyelet rose stitch, which you can see below. And it's important to work the gauge swatch in the round to get 14 stitches and 28 rounds equaling four inches, 10 centimeters. And the eyelet rose stitch worked in the round, you'll need to cast on a multiple of two stitches. And for round one and three, you will knit. Round two, you will purl. And round four, you're going to repeat a yarn over followed by an SPP all the way around. And for those of you that don't know, an SPP is a slip purl pass. You can skip ahead to rows seven through 10 in the pattern to learn how to work this stitch in the round. And now it's time for the pattern. I hope you guys enjoy it. So here I have all my cast on stitches on my needles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the whole thing and make sure that the cast on stitches are on the inside here and that nothing is twisted. And once I've determined that nothing is twisted, I can go ahead and pick it up and prepare to knit. Now I'm going to show you how to do an invisible join in the round. If you don't follow this method, you'll need one less stitch than I previously said, because you're going to be decreasing one stitch when you join in the round. Okay. So remember to do one less stitch if you're not doing this method. So you'll want your working yarn attached to your right hand needle. And you're going to take your right hand needle and go into the first stitch on your left hand needle from right to left basically as if you're going to purl, but keep the yarn in the back of your work. So go into the front loop of the first stitch on your left hand needle from right to left and just lift your right hand needle up to slip it from one needle to the next. And now we're going to go into the second stitch on your right hand needle and pull it over this first stitch and off. Go into the front loop of the second stitch from left to right. And I like to hold on to this first stitch here with my index finger. Go into that second stitch from left to right, pull it over, that first stitch and off, okay? And it's gonna be really loose and wonky like this. 
you just go ahead and pull on both the working yarn and the tail yarn. You don't have to pull super tight, but you just want to kind of close any loose stitch that you have there. And there you have it. You can go ahead and place your marker on your right hand needle and you are ready to work in the round. Round one, you're going to knit around. Round two, you are going to purl around. Round three, you're going to slip one purl wise with the yarn in back and then knit the rest of the round. Round four, you're going to purl around and then you're going to repeat rounds three and four one more time. So go into the front loop of the first stitch Kind of crisscross your needles like that, yarn over, bring the yarn from front to back over your needle, pull it through, slide off. And you're just going to do that all the way around this entire row. Go ahead and do that until you come back to the marker and I will meet you back here for row two. And then it's always implied that when you get to the end of a row that you slip the marker. So you just slip it from one needle to the next. And now row two is a purl row. You can go ahead and bring your yarn in between your needles to the front of your work and you are ready to work round two. Round two is just all purl stitches. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. And that's it. You just do that all the way around the row and I will meet you back here for row three. As always, when you get to the end of the row, you're just going to slip the marker. And for round three, you're going to slip the first stitch and then you're just going to knit the rest of the round. So you're doing this because when you knit in the round, you're basically knitting a spiral because where your row ends, is slightly higher than where your row began. This isn't super noticeable on like a stockinette knit round, but on purl rounds, because you get these ridges of purl bumps, it becomes quite noticeable in the round. So we slip the first stitch of each knit round to even up these purl bumps, okay? It just makes it look a lot neater. So keeping the yarn in the back of your work, you're going to go into the first stitch as if to purl. So go into the front loop of it from right to left, and you're just going to slip it to your right hand needle. So just slip it on over. And then you're just going to carry on knitting the rest of the round. So go into the front loop of the next stitch as if to knit. Crisscross your needles like that. Yarn over, pull through, slide off. And you just keep doing that. Just knit all the way around. And it's as simple as that. Round four will be your purl round. Just purling all the way. Round five will be a slip one, knit all the way around. And round six will be just a plain purl round. Once you finish your six setup rows, it is time to start working in your stitch pattern. Row seven, eight, nine, and 10 are your stitch pattern. Rows seven, eight, and nine are essentially what I've already shown you. Row seven, you're going to slip one and then knit around. Row eight, you're going to purl around. Row nine, you're going to slip one and then knit around. So go ahead and do all that and I will meet you back here for round 10. You're going to work a repeat of a yarn over followed by an SPP, which is a slip, purl, pass. Now that might sound complicated, but I'll walk you through it. So you're going to yarn over first. So take the yarn and you're going to go over the right hand needle from front to back. Okay. So I like to hold it in place with my right index finger. And now it's time for the SPP, which is a slip purl pass. So we're going to bring our yarn in between our needles and hold onto that yarn over so it doesn't slip off. Bring it in between our needles to the front. Okay, so you're going to go into the next stitch as if to purl, but you're just going to slip it. So with our yarn in front, go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left as if to purl, but just slip it to your right hand needle. And now you're going to purl the next stitch. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off. Now it's time for the pass. So the second stitch on your right hand needle is your slip stitch. You're going to take that and pull it over your purl stitch and off. So I like to hold on to this purl stitch here so it doesn't go anywhere. And I go into the front loop of the second stitch from left to right. You might have to hold it with your thumb, pull it over that purl stitch and off. So you have your yarn over and then you have your SPP and that's it. You're just going to repeat a yarn over followed by an SPP all the way around. So I'll show that to you one more time. You can keep your yarn in the front of your work if it's easiest. Go ahead and yarn over. So bring the yarn in front of the right hand needle around to the back. And then you're going to go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left as if to purl, but just move it to your right hand needle, slipping it, and then go into the next stitch as if to purl, and this time you actually are going to purl it. So go into the front loop from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off. This is our slip stitch, this is our purl stitch. So again, hold on to your purl stitch with your finger, go into the slip stitch from left to right, the front loop of it, and pull it over that purl stitch and off. You can get this stitch as close to the edge as you need to to get it to slip over, but you hold it with your finger so it doesn't fall off. 
and that's it. You're just going to repeat that all the way around and that's your repeat. So you're just going to repeat rounds seven through 10 an additional 17 times for a total of 68 additional rows. And after a while, the stitch pattern will start to look something like this. So go ahead and do all of those repeats and I will meet you back here for the end garter edging. This is exactly the same as the beginning garter edging we did, so I'm not really gonna walk you through it. Row 79, you're going to slip on pearl wise with the yarn in back and then knit the rest of the round. Row 80, you're going to pearl around. Round 81, you're going to slip on pearl wise with the yarn in back and then knit the rest of the round and repeat rounds 80 and 81 an additional three times for a total of six additional rounds and nine total rounds of garter. And then when it comes to the bind off, I chose to do a standard pearl bind off, but just as a note, the next clip I'm gonna show you is a standard pearl bind off worked on a different cowl. It's exactly the same because they both have that kind of garter edging, but if the stitch pattern looks different, it's because it's worked on a different cowl. But the process for binding off is exactly the same. You can do any kind of standard bind off that you prefer, but I am going to do a pearl bind off where you purl two stitches and then you pull the second stitch over the first and off the needle. So go ahead and bring your yarn in between your needles to the front of your work. You're going to go into the front loop of the first stitch on your left needle from right to left and you're just going to purl it. So yarn over, pull through, slide off and do that one more time. Into the front loop from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And now you're going to go into the second stitch on the right hand needle and you're going to go into the front loop of it from left to right and pull it over this first stitch and off the needle. So go into the second stitch here from left to right just into the front loop. I find it helpful to place a finger on this first stitch here so it doesn't slide off. And you're going to pull that second stitch over the first and off. And now for the rest of your bind off, you're going to purl one, bind one off all the way around. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off to purl it. And then we're just going to repeat that bind off process. So go into the front loop of the second stitch here from left to right, hold on to this first stitch with your finger, and pull that second stitch over and off. And you're just going to do that all the way around until you have only one stitch left. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for the end. So once you get down to one stitch on your needle, you can go ahead and cut the yarn, leaving a tail long enough to weave in later. And then you can just take your needle and pull that stitch all the way out. Don't worry, it's not gonna unravel or anything. So you might notice a gap here, okay? A little bit more noticeable from the back side, but there's a dip here from where we finished our bind off and where we started our bind off. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a fake stitch in between the beginning and the end of your bind off so that you can kind of join the two ends together and make it look more natural. So what you'll want to do is thread your tail yarn through a yarn needle and it's a little bit easier to tell from the back side. So if you flip it over, you might be able to see a line of V's so typically when we knit a stitch, you can see the V's like this, but when you bind off, you're pulling one over the other, so they go this way instead, okay? You might be able to see them here. Here's one, here's one. So we're just going to follow that all the way over to our beginning of our round. So if you'll notice here, this is the beginning of our round, this whole column here. So we go up to the top of it, and since it's a pearl bind off, it's a little bit hard to tell. So here's our right leg. You can see it right here. Since we have two left legs here, there's one, here's one. It can be a little bit hard to tell, but the one that we want is right next to the second one here. So if we just go one right over, we can find it right there. I have a more in-depth video on this if you wanna watch the whole thing, but just find a really clear one and move over until you get to the beginning of the round. Here's another clear one. And then this would be the next clearest. And this is our last full one before we have this gap here. So you're going to take your yarn needle and just like I have, go underneath both legs of that V of our bind off stitch, right? And from front to back, pull that yarn through and it will kind of pull the other side towards you. So you want this length here to be about the same width as all of these stitches here because you want it to blend in with all of these. So make sure the tension is about the same there as all the others. If you need to loosen it, just pull up on it. If you need to tighten it, just pull on the working yarn. So then we need to look at our last bound off stitch. 
okay, which we can see looks a little bit scrunched, but you can see both legs of it right there. It is a V and there is a left leg and a right leg. We're going to go down through the middle of it. So you see where this string comes out of? That's essentially what we're gonna go down through. So if it's a V like this, you're going to take your needle and go through the middle and out the back underneath the right leg. So through the middle and out the back. And then you just pull it through. And again, you want this stitch that you've created to be about the same size as all the others. So now you can see it creates a much neater finish. You can almost not tell which one is which. Now, because we're working purl stitches in the round, it's a little bit wonky because you have a jog here. So if it was just plain stockinette in the round, it would look much neater, but this is much neater than it would have been otherwise. So now you're just going to weave in your ends. So I've flipped my project over and I'll show you quickly how I would weave in my ends. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I change it up every time depending on, you know, what looks best to me in the moment. So again, remember you don't want to go just straight up or just straight horizontal. You want to go a little bit diagonal. So I'm just going to, you know, go underneath a couple of these loops and I'm going to go underneath this whole stitch here. See how I went underneath both legs of it? Pull through. Just go up through the bump next to it. And then I'm going to go underneath this one. There's not a whole lot of um, thought put behind this. I usually just do whatever, you know, feels like it's gonna be secure. And I'm gonna go up a little bit to make sure it goes a little bit diagonal. So really you're just kind of going underneath certain stitches, underneath certain pieces of yarn. It doesn't have to be super methodical. So I went a little bit this way and then I went a little bit up and to the left, okay? So now I'm just going to take my yarn and go back down and I'm just going to split a couple of these stitches. Okay, so if they have like three or four plies that make up each strand of yarn. I'm gonna go in through part of a strand instead of the whole thing and split it. And then you can kind of tug on your project to make sure that end is nice and situated in there. And then you can cut the yarn close to the end. And there you have it. It doesn't look perfect because it looks a little bit weird when you do pull rows in the round, but it looks much neater. And you can see that we have at least a straight line here, okay? It doesn't dip down. So you can go ahead and weave in your end on the other half, block your project, and you are good to go. It's ready to wear.